Schmidt Trigger, a beautiful technique and a powerful tool which is very simple to implement. It employs a mysterious concept called hysteresis. Does the term hysteresis sound intimidating? If you are diving into electronics, complex concepts can sometimes feel overwhelming, but don't worry, I am here to make it simple and fun. Join me to break down this complex concept into bite-sized, easy-to-understand pieces using a practical example. By the end of this video, you will see that Schmidt Trigger and Hysteresis aren't as scary as they sound. Together, we will turn this complex concept into a powerful tool you can use with confidence. The real magic happens in the final moments, so stay tuned for more. In electronics, hysteresis refers to a system's dependency on its history of inputs, not just the input at the moment. I mean, hysteresis is when a system's output depends not only on the input at the moment, but also on past inputs, creating memory effect that stabilizes the output against small fluctuations or noises. Even though this definition is completely correct and true, it is useless because a person who knows what hysteresis is can understand the definition completely and confirm that the definition is correct. But it is nonsense to others who are going to learn what hysteresis is. I'll give you a better definition later in this video. Firstly, I'm gonna bring you an example circuit and demonstrate what is hysteresis in the heart of the circuit. This is an LDR or light dependent resistor. Actually, an LDR is a variable resistor and its resistance depends on the illumination level of the environment. I'm gonna test it using my LCR meter. As you can see, by increasing the illumination level in the environment, its resistance decreases, and by decreasing the illumination level, its resistance increases. By putting another resistor in series with the LDR, you can make a light-dependent voltage. Look here, when the illumination level increases, the voltage at point A increases as well, and when the illumination level decreases, the voltage at point A decreases. Now, you can use this variable voltage as input to the system. For example, by using an op-amp in comparator mode, you can make a photocell. This potentiometer produces a reference voltage from 0 volts to VCC depending on the handle position and this circuit here produces a variable voltage according to the illumination level. On the other hand, this op-amp here will compare the two input voltages and if the voltage at inverting input is lower than the voltage at non-inverting input, it will activate the output. I'm gonna use the circuit at the op amp's output, an LED, a resistor, a relay, and a transistor. The circuit works fine, but there is a small difficulty here. When the reference voltage at inverting input is very close to the sensor voltage at non-inverting input, the relay at output turns on and off like crazy. Can you see that? Look at the LED. Look at this diagram here. 
there is a noise like this on the sensor voltage. Actually, the sensor voltage is a combination of the voltage produced by the sensor caused by the intended illumination level, which is the variable DC voltage, and an unwanted noise factor caused by the environmental sources like light bulbs or others. Sometimes, because of some noises in the environment or some physical movements caused by the wind or something, the sensor voltage fluctuates a bit. When the sensor voltage is far enough from the reference voltage, there will be no problem because the entire voltage and its added noise will be separate from the reference voltage, no matter it is higher than that or lower than that. But when the sensor voltage is close to the reference voltage, it is likely that in some parts of the noise period, the sensor voltage gets higher than the reference voltage and and it will cause the output of the comparator to activate and in some other parts of the noise period it gets lower than the reference voltage and turns the output off. This is why the relay turns on and off like crazy. This is a big problem but the solution is really simple. You need a concept called Schmidt trigger. What is a Schmidt trigger? Good question, let me answer. In ordinary comparator systems, there is only one threshold voltage, like the reference voltage in the previous example, and the sensor voltage. The sensor voltage is compared to that single reference voltage, but in a Schmidt trigger system, we have two reference voltages. This is an ordinary comparator system using a single reference voltage where the noise can find the way to the output. In this area, the relay is on, in this area, the relay is off, and here, the relay will turn on and off rapidly because in this area, the sensor voltage can go higher and lower than the reference voltage periodically because of the added noise. But in a Schmidt trigger system like this, the output will be activated once the sensor voltage gets higher than this threshold here, and then the output will be turned off once the sensor voltage gets lower than this, the second threshold here. So, in this area that I marked as X here, the state of the relay at the output depends on its previous state. That is, if it is coming from this area to this area, it will remain on in this area. And if it is coming from this area to this area, it will remain off in this area. This is called the schmidt trigger technique, which can make the output more stable and prevent the environment noise from affecting the output. Let me give you another example. Look here, in a simple comparator system like this, the relay at the output will be turned on if the sensor voltage gets higher than this reference voltage like this area, this area, this area and this one and it will be turned off if the sensor voltage gets lower than the reference voltage like here, here, here and also here. But in a Schmidt trigger system like this, the relay at the output will be turned on when the sensor voltage gets higher than the reference one at this point and it will remain on in the X area here because it is coming from the honest state here but when it reaches the reference 2 at this point it will be turned off and it will remain off in the x area here because it is coming from uh, off state here until it reaches the reference 1 at this point then it will be turned on and until it reaches the reference 2 it will remain on it seems nice, but how can we make the system with two thresholds? This is the million dollar question. Actually, there are countless ways to implement the Schmidt trigger technique, but the simplest way is to add an extra resistor. How do I do that? I'm gonna explain. By putting this Schmidt trigger resistor here, the output will be protected and the noise at the input will never find a way to the output. 
by putting this resistor here we will actually have two separate threshold voltages for turning the output on and turning the output off when the sensor voltage is lower than the reference voltage the up amps output is active here meaning that the voltage at the output is very close to vcc in this condition when the up amp is turned on the schmidt trigger resistor will increase the reference voltage right now suppose that the sensor voltage is increased in such a way that it exceeds the increased reference voltage so the up amp has to turn the output off meaning that the voltage at the output has to be zero volts now in this new situation the Schmidt trigger resistor will decrease the reference voltage in this situation to switch the up amps output on the sensor voltage has to get lower than the decreased reference voltage so if the output is active the sensor has to get higher than the increased reference voltage to turn the output off and if the output is not active the sensor voltage has to get lower than than the uh, decreased reference voltage to activate the output. Look here, the problem is solved completely and now the circuit is fine and working nicely. It's awesome. By the way, by increasing the resistance of the Schmidt trigger resistor, the two reference voltages will get closer to each other and by decreasing the resistance of the Schmidt trigger resistors, the two reference voltages will get far from each other. That was so beautiful. The technique to use two reference voltages instead of a single reference voltage is called the Schmidt trigger, which is used to block the noise at input. Actually, this technique prevents the circuit from using only the input at the moment to make decision to turn the output on or off, and it forces the circuit to use the older input values along with the current input value to make decision when to turn the output on or off. Look at these two systems again. In an ordinary comparator system like this one, the output of the comparator is determined only by the input value at the moment. For example, here at this point, you can watch the input only and predict the output, right? If the input is lower than the reference voltage, then the output has to be off. Otherwise, the output has to be on. This is true all the time in an ordinary system with a single reference voltage. But in a Schmidt trigger system like this one, you can't determine the output only using the sensor value at the moment for example look at this point here here the sensor value is between the high and low threshold so you tell me in this situation the output has to be on or off you can't guess right you can't answer that because the output value can be on or off depending on the sensor's previous values if the sensor value is decreased from a value higher than this threshold to here the output has to be on but if the sensor value is increased from a value lower than this threshold to here it has to be off now the output value depends on both the sensor value at the moment and the past values. It means that the circuit has something like memory now. Actually, we use the Schmidt trigger to add hysteresis to the circuit. I said at the beginning of the video that I'm going to give you a better definition of the hysteresis later, right? I lied. But don't be angry with me because after giving you the Schmidt trigger example, the nonsense definition that is presented at the beginning of the video makes sense now. Hysteresis refers to the system's dependency on its history of inputs, not just the input at the moment. Hysteresis is when a system's output depends not only on the current input, but also on past inputs, creating memory effect that stabilizes the output against small fluctuations or noises. Thank you for watching. If you want to see more amazing content like this, make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for updates. Until the next video, take care and have a good one. See you in the next video.